I do want to say what I do want to talk about what we saw. One, congratulations and, and huge shout out to the Miami Heat. One, I nobody outside of Miami expected them to be there. Nobody expected them to fight as as much as they did. Nobody expected uh, Jimmy Butler to be as great as he was, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Shouts out to Miami Heat, man. They definitely uh, they definitely exceeded expectations. And what we saw from the Lakers is. We saw experience. Now, yes, you know, Caruso's never been to the finals. Uh, KCP, I don't think, has ever been to the finals. We saw experience. We saw a team that in game six, because like I said, Lakers are going to win in six. In game six, they sensed that Miami, the Miami Heat had some confidence. They sensed that, you know, Gordon Draghi was coming back. So that was going to be a... That that was going to be a, a energy boost, and Bam Adebayo wasn't has didn't play good the entire series, and it's like, you know, you you expect a player that good to have a have a have a game where he's able to put them on their back because Jimmy Butler did the whole series. There's going to be a game where Bam Adebayo was just incredible. So with the Lakers sensing that, there's like, all right, you know what, we do not, and I repeat, do not want to get to a game seven. And in game six, the, the experience came out. LeBron James played incredible. Anthony Davis, even though he's never been to the finals, he has been to the playoffs, and he's been in the league uh, for a good number of years. He came to play. And then you saw, you know, you saw veteran leadership with Rondo. And so many key pieces. KCP had a great game. Danny Green, after missing the game winner in game five, He came back and had a good game in game six. It's like the experience came out and greatness came out because LeBron James had a triple double and LeBron James was unstoppable like he's been the the rest of his uh, or the entire his entire career. He's been he's been LeBron. And. You know, this. This this championship symbolizes a lot. Now you now. There's two sides to this as far as there's two there there's two ways that people can look at this ring. I will be one of the people to look at it as it's a ring. <laughs> like a lot of people want to put that asterisk mark like no, it's a ring, man. There was 30 teams that could have won. There was 22 teams that went into that bubble. One team came out with a ring. That's just how it is. Uh and then of course this is this has been an adverse year, man. Like this has been a year not only the world has never seen, but sports have never seen. So you dealing with all that, I, I think, you know, this this championship is is, you know, bigger than bigger than bigger than the he can even ima- well, you know, I'm not gonna say bigger than the than we can even imagine because as you're seeing people, you know, the, 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 I think the Lakers understand how big this championship is and how hard it is. Hell, these people have been away from their families for a hundred plus years. I mean, hundred plus days. And it's like, this, it, it's been tough. And that's, you know, I give, I give all the credit to, to the Lakers, man. The Lakers beat, let me say this. The Lakers, and I said this on I said this on social media, the Lakers had the two best players by far. LeBron James, still the best player in the league. Anthony Davis, best big in the league. They had the two best players by far. But the Miami Heat had the best team. You know, when you go down the roster, you have Jimmy Butler, you have Bam Adebayo, you have Gordon Dragic, you have Tyler Yero, who was playing good. You had Duncan Robinson, Jay Crowder, uh, you know, even people that don't play like that, Kelly Olynyk, uh, Miles Leonard, Derek Jones, who did, I think he only played in garbage minutes in game six, uh, Solomon Hill. Like there's a lot of players that, that could be productive, that, that are productive players. I say that. So, again, I want to congratulate the uh, the Lakers for winning the 2020 NBA championship. Well-deserved. A lot of people, including myself, did not expect them to make it. I thought that seeing at seeing the team at the Clippers, you know, got together with 
Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Montrez Harold, and all that. I I thought they were were gonna win it, but clearly I was wrong. And yes, uh, congratulations to the 2020 champions, Los Angeles Lakers. This is their 17th championship. I think they're tied with the Boston Celtics with most championships in the league. So congratulations to them. And now we now we look at you know what? Let's let's first before we look at what's next, let's look at how we got here. And how we got here kind of goes hand in hand with what's next. We saw last year the Lakers team look completely different than this year. LeBron James was injured. You still, <laughs> it was just you had Lonzo on the team. You had Brandon Ingram on the team. You had Josh Hart on the team. It was a young team, and you know you shipped them out with a with a draft pick to get Anthony Davis, and. One thing that I was I questioned, and these act these these questions kind of rose, you know, uh, came to fruition in the in the regular season was outside of Anthony Davis and LeBron James, what do you have? You know, you didn't have much scoring. You definitely didn't have much shooting. I was like, I didn't know how it was going to work, and that was one reason why I was hesitant to say that they win a championship because. If you look at the last few champions, they had elite shooting from the floor, or they had somebody that was just incredible. And while yes, you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, they just didn't have enough shooting. Not to mention going into the bubble, and even in the bubble, they were like the worst defense in the league, or in the they were the worst perimeter. Let's say this: they were the worst perimeter defense in the in the bubble and they were definitely the worst uh three point shooting team in the bubble. And like I said man, it's it's like you have LeBron and you have Anthony Davis and they were incredible. And LeBron just reminded people that he's still the best player in the league. Anthony Davis reminded people how good he was cuz a lot of people look at Anthony Davis and say, "Well, it's like this there's great players in the league. I mean, there's great players of all, you know, all time. There's great players. There's the Tim Duncans. There's the the there's the KGs. There's the Dirks. There's players that get elevated because of championships. And there's great players that don't win championships but are still great. You know, you have the Charles Barkleys. You have the Carl Malones, the John Stocktons. Anthony Davis was living well I think if Anthony Davis never won a championship he would be in that class with Charles Barkley but I don't think that he'd get the respect now people including myself were questioning yo is is Anthony Davis better than Charles Barkley and and you know now that he has a ring you can kind of I'm not gonna say he is better that's you know but and you know Anthony Davis definitely is one of those players that deserved a ring Seeing as though how he played, you know, how, how important he was to man, I mean, to the Lakers. There was m- multiple games in the playoffs where he was the best player on the floor. Hell, I was, I thought, especially looking at how they played in the conference, conference championship or conference finals, I thought that Anthony Davis was going to win finals MVP until we got to the finals and LeBron James shut that down. So, uh, So what's next? What's next? You know, LeBron James will be going into his 18th season. But there's there's a point where I'm just like, who cares? And I'm going to say who cares. LeBron James, you know, everyone's talking about he's going to hit that wall eventually, which he will. Everyone does. But it doesn't seem like how LeBron James is playing now. It doesn't seem like he's going to hit that wall anytime soon. It doesn't seem like, hell, he's still the best player in the world. And we saw that in the in these in these playoffs. We saw that in the championship. He won his fourth championship at age. Well, I'm not. I don't know the age. I think 35. At age 35, in his 17th year. So, again, I hear a lot of people saying that I think the lake that the Lakers could repeat. The Lakers can go back to back. Just, just, just slow down. And when I say slow down, I'm not. I'm not discrediting this ring at all this ring was well deserved 
this ring was hard fought. But if you're looking at next year compared to this year, there's a lot that should be different. I don't see the league being in a bubble for the whole season. I don't see the league season stopping how in the middle of the season how it did. Uh, I don't see. I don't see what what the world is experiencing now with COVID and and everything that's going on with the election and stuff and and the black the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't see that having a blanket over this over next season not to mention if we're just talking about pure basketball all the players that didn't play you know you got if you look at all the players that's coming back you still have the clippers that'll come back with with another year or with a year of experience playing together golden state's gonna have steph curry and clay thompson back the brooklyn nets on the east they're gonna have KD and Kyrie, you're still going to see what the Bucks are going to do because a lot of people are saying that they're going to really go hard for, uh, really go hard for uh, Chris Paul. Hell, we don't know what Golden State's going to do with the second overall pick. It's like there's a lot of factors going in. Not to mention, if you look at the if you look at the uh, Lakers team, almost everybody outside like LeBron James is either have either have a player option. Or as a free agent, like you have Anthony Davis is a player option. I believe KCP is a player option. Like you, Dwight Howard is a free agent. And shouts out to Dwight Howard. I'm happy for Dwight. You know, I've I'm sit I've sat here week after week after week talking about how to me Dwight Howard is underrated. Yeah, a lot of people might not like his personality and how he exited a couple of teams, but. Dwight Howard to me is a first battle hall of famer, and a lot of people I got a lot I got a lot of flack for that. But congratulations, to, I'm glad Dwight Howard got a ring. But like I said, next year a lot of a lot of players that didn't play this year will be coming back healthy. A lot of teams will be making a lot of moves. We don't know what the Lakers are going to do with the team that is there because a lot of them are free agents or or player options. And honestly, I think that. Even if all the players come back, even if every player from this year's championship team come back, I think that the Lakers, even though they did win, don't get me wrong, they did win this year. I don't know if they have enough to win again, seeing as though the type of the talent, the 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 caliber of talent they will be facing to me will be could be or should be better than the caliber of talent they're fa- they face this year. And. But I'm not taking away from anything that, you know, they they had or anything. I'm not taking away from the championship. Do not hear me say that this this has been again. This is an incredible you play the game to win, man. You play sports to win. Nobody walks on the court, walks on the field, walks on the course to lose. So, again, they were the they were the they they're at the mountaintop. Shouts out to every member of the Lakers. Shouts out to Quinn Cook being a two-time champion from PG. Shouts out to Rondo being the first player ever to win a championship on the Lakers and the Celtics. Shouts out again to Braun for winning his first or fourth ring and fourth Finals MVP. Shout out to Anthony Davis winning his first ring. Uh, KCP winning his first ring. Danny Green being another player winning his third championship in three different teams. Nobody talks about that. Uh, Dwight Howard winning his first, you know, the, everyone on the Lakers, congratulations. All the former Wizards, hell, you have Jared Dudley, you have Markeith Morris, Dwight, and um, there was one more that was a former Wizard. I don't know, but congratulations to the Lakers for for being 2020's uh, NBA champion. And again, I'm excited to see what the offseason brings for this NBA. One, I'm excited to see, hopefully, hopefully COVID and everything is handled before next season, but I'm excited to see how they handle it, who goes where, because I don't I don't see Chris Paul staying with OKC, even though he was incredible. I think that there are going to be more teams kind of vying for him. I want to see what Golden State does with the second overall pick. Do they draft James Wiseman or do they trade for a couple pieces, uh, I want to see what happens. I want to see how KD comes back with 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 uh, K- 
Kyrie Irving. I, there's so much I want to see in this offseason. I'm excited. I'm excited. And hell, even coming back, even though I don't know if they'll go back to back, LeBron James and Anthony Davis will still be amongst the top duos in the league. Again, you'll have KD and Kyrie, Steph and Clay. You'll have Dame and CJ. Like there, people will be coming back. So, um, hell, and, and don't be surprised if Giannis and Chris Paul would be if if they get Chris Paul. Don't be surprised if they'll be in the top. So, oh, and, and Paul George and Kawhi. So, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. But that doesn't take away from the fact that LeBron James and the LA Lakers have won the 2020 NBA championship. So shouts out to you guys.